hello hello there in this tutorial today i'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this beautiful wrap top with a belt and an exaggerated sleeve i actually added a band to the sleeve this it's a crop top so you're going to be learning how to make it trust me this top is so simple you can actually use it to pair palazzo's trouser high waist trouser or um pencil high waist skirt just anything high waist and if you like to show a, li uh, show a little bit of tummy then that's fine probably you might not really need a high waist so this is what the top looks like it's so beautiful this is what the back looks like this is how to go ahead and tie it i'm actually going to be making a palazzo for this maybe a black palazzo that i'm going to be using to pair this top and step out Woo! i know it's going to be looking so so beautiful so this is what we're going to be learning to make today it's called a crop wrap top okay with an exaggerated sleeve so follow me guys so that you see how we make this so the next coming is the measurement that you're going to be needing for this tutorial you can screenshot it and go ahead and insert your own measurements so here i've laid down my pattern paper and i folded it into two i already marked out the shape that i want please in case you don't know how to mark the shape that's already laying there you can go and watch our video on how to draft a basic bodice it will help you a lot so this is what i'm doing i've marked the length of my top the length that i'm using for this top is 16 and a half and then I added an extra half for folding for the down part, which made it 17 inches in length. So go ahead and use your own length. I've inserted the shoulder. I've inserted the armhole. That's the L shape that you see there. I've gone ahead to mark the bust point and the uh, under bust measurement. And now I'm inserting the measurements for the side. My bust measurement is 35 and I've divided it into four places. And I have 8.75 for my 2 inches allowance. And for my underboss and the length of my top is actually the same measurement for the circumference 28. So I divided by 4 and inserted the 7. And I went ahead to add 3 inches allowance for my waist area because I'm going to be adding a dart. 2 inches for my allowance, side allowance, and then 1 inch for my dart. So I'm marking the back first. But what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to be marking both the front and the back together on this. So I'll first of all cut out the, the front and then sorry the back and I'll use it to place on the fabric and then I'll use the same pattern to do the front. So here I'm marking my neckline, a three by three neckline for I was marking it for the front anyways, but I ended up not using it. I went down by one inch, that's my shoulder slope. And then I went ahead to just you know um get the midpoint on our shoulder on our armhole like we did on the basic bodies, and I went in by 0 0.75 so that I can reduce the excess bulk in the front. I went in here with my curved ruler and I you know shaped it to look really nice. And once I was done doing this on the neckline, I added um half inch on the shoulder for stitching and i went ahead on the neckline and for the back neckline what i'm going to be using is one inch okay so i've marked my half inch for stitching because i'm adding both my allowance and everything on this pattern then here is my one inch depth for the back neckline and i'm going to be cutting like i told you guys i'm drafting both the front and the back together on the same piece and i'm going to go ahead and cut it and i'll place on the fabric and i'll show you guys what it looks like just follow me guys this tutorial is so simple and it's very beginner friendly so i'm going ahead to actually cut it out and this is what it looks like when i had opened it up so i'm going to bring in my fabric now first before i do the front i'm going to bring in my fabric and i'll lay this on it this is a one and a half um yard of fabric leftover fabric I had used it to sew a skirt or something and this is what was remaining and that's what i'm using for this top one and a half if you're on a bigger size you could uh, use like two inches or maybe even more so i've laid this fabric here on fold and i'm cutting out the back right now so once i was done doing this next thing i just you know unpinned it and separated it and then i will go ahead and start working use the pattern to work on the front area of this 
um wrap top so this is what the back looks like after i was done doing it and i opened it up for you guys to see what it looks like so i'm going to go ahead now i'm bringing the front and i'm going to be working on the front at this side so first thing i'm going to be doing is to be to determine i i i, I extended the lines to where it is supposed to to the other end of my pattern then i'm going ahead to mark my neckline the neckline i'm using i ended up using for this was um seven inches although i marked seven inches here but at the end of the day i ended up using eight inches um depth yeah because i i realized that there is seven inches was actually you know too high although i didn't want to show a lot of cleavage so here i'm going ahead to measure the allowance i have by the side so i can insert it on the other side and mark it because that is the point where i'm going to be connecting the slanted um wrap into so that's why i have to mark this out so i've actually gone ahead to mark from my shoulder and i marked my my 18 inches for for neck depth on the center point line you you, you actually saw the way i placed my ruler then i'm going to use my i'm going to come in here now with my straight ruler and i will connect from that shoulder to that point that i made and from that point straight down into the the main allowance remember i had already marked out the 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 main sorry the main measurement i had already marked out the allowance i'm not going to make use of it so this is what i'm doing at this point and this is what it looks like so i'm trying to blend it at this point now so that it looks really good for you guys to see so once i was done doing this the next thing i actually did was to bring in my scissors and i went ahead to cut this out and after i was done cutting this out um, this other part is no longer a part of what we are using. We've taken it out. Anytime you see me mark this, you know, put this marks on something, it means, you know, I have no use for that part again. So I'm not going to use it again. So now on the bust point, now I'm trying to, you know, reduce any form of gaping that might be on that slanted form. Because usually... Um, when you're making an overlap, it usually has this sort of gaping or something. So I'm trying to eliminate that. So on the bust point line, I'm going to be opening up on each side by half of an inch. But please, if you are busty, go ahead and use 0 0.25. Okay. So I'm opening up by half of an inch and I'm going to connect it straight down into the end of my, of that bust line. Okay. I marked it and I... I, I connected it straight down so i will go ahead i'm indicating for you guys where i don't need any more sorry about my voice my voice is a bit cracked so i've marked it and i'm going to go ahead to just cut it out at this point i actually went to see if this was filming at all so i'm going to go ahead and use my scissors and cut this through when I cut out that one inch, the, the half here and half the making it one inch that I already marked, I'm going to cut it all through. I will go ahead and I will use my masking tape to put it back together. So here you see me cutting it out. I'm no longer going to need that part. So this will reduce any form of excess that may that you may that would have probably been in front when you are done sewing. This eliminates it. Remember, guys, I said if you have a smaller bust, you go ahead and open up on that bust point by half inch on each side. But if you have a bigger bust, please make sure that you go ahead and use 0 0.25 on each of that side so that you don't take out so much. So here I'm laying this together back again and I'm going to making sure that the sides are lined. You see that the side lines are lined and then I am... Um, using my masking tape to put it back together if you watch this pattern closely you see that we've lost some measurement because of what we did we've lost some measurements on the front area but don't worry i'm going to go ahead and put in another pattern paper underneath it and i will fill it up okay so here is me putting another pattern paper and i'm trying to fill that place up i'm using my pins to secure it so that um you know the pattern doesn't keep moving so once i was done doing that i'll bring in my ruler and i will just mark a straight line connecting from the the one on the down part you know where we have and then connecting it back into towards the neckline area on that front because that's actually where we need to fill up at this point so you just watch what i'm doing do you see i'm trying to fill up that excess that we've lost at that point so this is what i'm doing
so i've gone ahead to fill this up and i will go ahead and use my scissors to actually cut it out and once i was done doing this if you also notice on the side you're going to see that we've lost like 0 0.25 on the side because that part is actually open we didn't really lose it anyways but it's actually open and we need to fill it up so i'm using my masking tape and i'm putting another pattern paper underneath and i'm securing it with my masking tape so that way i'm just going to cut it out and once i was done doing this the thing that will happen is i'm going to bring the back now and i'm going to measure it and you will see that because of that opening on that side we have an extra to uh, 0.25 longer in length than for the back so we'll go ahead and come back on the armhole and remove that 0.25 and then use our ruler and we'll connect it back into the armhole please guys follow me this tutorial is actually very simple so please if you've not subscribed to my channel i think this is a good point to do that to subscribe to my channel to give me a thumbs up if you actually love what i'm doing and to also hit the notification bell so that you're going to be notified every time that i upload a new video trust me my tutorials are very simple and you're going to learn a whole lot from this channel so you don't want to miss out on anything so then i brought in my fabric at this point and i folded it into two this is 1.5 yeah we had so i'm trying to manage it as much as i can to be able to make this stop so i've put it i've laid it down together making sure that it's into two like i folded it into two so i'm going ahead to mark half inch on the you know front part that i'm actually going to use to turn that part so that i don't have a lot of shortage so i pinned it down and i'm going ahead to cut it out and after i am done doing this the next thing i'm going to do is just to mark the dart on the paper i wanted to mark the dart on the fabric but i said let me mark it on the paper so that it's going to be more visible for you guys so next thing i did that was that is very very important is that i notched the center point because this helps you when you're going to insert the measurement to actually know where the center point of each side is so that you can put it together and then insert your measurement so here i'm going ahead to mark from that center point i marked four inches for my dart my for my that and then i i went down from the bust point by one inch okay and then i'm marking that line and after i mark i marked that line i went ahead to open up on each side by half of an inch now if you're a person that is busty please go ahead and use 0.75 you can open up 0.75 or maybe one one inch on each side but i'm not so busty so i'm using half half inch on each side so i'm connecting back into the one inch i had gone down by from the bust point so i'm connecting back into it creating this form of um triangled uh, form you know creating the dart legs so after i was done doing this i had to use my scissors to you know indicate and notch those points the three points that i'm going to be sewing so that it's easy for me to be able to you know sew it when i'm ready to do that so i've separated it and this is what it looks like i'm going to open it up for you guys to see what it looks like at this point so this is what my front looks like and I'm using my chalk to mark the uh, because this fabric that's the way it is you can't really know tell the front from the back so once I cut I use my chalk to actually just um, mark the lines so that it's easy for me to know where the front and the, the right side and the wrong side of this fabric is so that's my front and then here is my and here is my back okay so now this is the point where i realized that it was deep like i told you guys that it was too high and i wanted it to be a little deep so i just used my curve to just curve in that part because i just i wanted to show a little cleavage but i did not want to show so much of a cleavage so this is absolutely dependent on you if you want to show much cleavage fine you can go ahead and deepen it even more but if you don't want to show, show so much then it's fine so here is my fabric and i folded this is the the remaining uh, part of my fabric i'm actually going to use it for the sleeve um for the picture that i posted if you want to make that exact sleeve please you're going to be putting this fabric your fabric on fold by um one by 180 degree flay okay the way we put a 180 degree flay like 
um i don't know if you get but i just hope you get or maybe i'm going to do a tutorial on a 180 degree flame but here i'm actually using what i have okay my fabric is not really enough to gather up such volume of um sleeves so i'm going ahead to you know make do with what i have so what i'm doing on the sleeve is actually please go and watch our tutorial on how to draft a basic sleeve that's basically what i'm doing here i'm using the basic sleeve for this but what i did at the end is that after i was done marking this i had when i was adding the allowance towards the armhole i made sure that i added a, enough because i i was going to pleat it later on so the length i'm using for this is 22 inches i actually want it to be a three quarter my three quarter length is 17 and i went ahead to add those excess so that by the time i you know i push it up i'm going to have that um fullness all right um on my sleeve so that's why i made the length 22 inches so i've gone ahead to what i use for this is like five inches extra so that it will enable me you know have some pleats on the center point i'm going to pleat so i'm going ahead to just connect this mine looks more like an a line after i was done doing this you see the way it's looking i connected like an a line form and i'm going ahead to just cut it okay so here is what my sleeve looks like after i was done with this so the remaining pieces i used it for the for the uh the belt i mean you guys you don't want to know what i went through to be able to get that belt i didn't have much of a fabric i kept joining and joining until i was able to get a strap that's long enough so this is what it looks like this is my back right now and i'm going to go ahead to insert my darts for the back remember we've already done for the front we've not done for the back so i'm going to go ahead and insert my darts for the back so for my back that from my shoulder i'm going to be using eight and a half inches because my armhole is eight inches and your back that is actually supposed to stop where your armhole line is okay so my armhole is eight inches plus the half i had added for the um the joining on for the shoulder so that's eight and a half so here i'm marking four inches my bust span is seven and a half and i went ahead to add half inches half inch to it so maybe four inches and i'm opening up on each side i marked that straight line and i opened up on each side for the back for half inch please don't go over half inch for the back because you really don't have anything that you want to protrude so this is what i'm doing here i marked the half half inch on each of the sides and i connected it i went ahead to do the same thing for the other side side okay eight and a half and so you see it's eight and a half i marked out that half but if, if you're if you're counting it without a half then it's eight from that half is eight but if not it is eight and a half then i'm marking four inches for the that width and then i'm marking um 0 0.5 for my that leg like i opened up on each side by 0 0.5 that's half inch then i'm connecting it like you see me doing with my ruler once i was done doing this i'm going to take this to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew this i will show you guys how to i'm, I'm going to sew this and i'll bring it back for you guys so that you will see what this really looks like when i sew it i'm going to go ahead and iron it flat I told you guys so this is how to pick it you pick the center point of your dart you see pick the center point of your dart and you sew all the way into that point you do the same thing for the other side you also bring the front we had already you know marked the front dart on the pattern and notched it all you need to do is just to follow that notch so here i'm done putting my insert in my darts and then i went ahead to iron them flat i told you guys anytime you're ironing a dart make sure your two darts are facing each other that's the best that's the professional way to iron a dart so my two darts are facing each other at ironing flat you can see the way it's looking already so after i was done doing this what i did was i picked the center point this is why you need to notch pick the both center point and put them together when i had to use my pin to pin that point and also pin all that down part you know because it's going to be open you cannot sew it so you need to use your pin to secure it before you are able to insert your measure your your circumference measurement so after i was done doing this i had to just put it together and i pinned it on the side also pinned it down on the side also and then i inserted my measurement my measurement is um 
my bust measurement is um 35 inches and when you divide by two you're going to be having 17 and a half my under bust circumference measurement is 24 sorry 20 28 inches and when you divide by two you're going to be having 14 inches so that's what i did at this point i inserted it you're going to see the way that i insert my measurements so here we're starting with the waist measurement so from that point to this point i inserted the 14 inches which is um my measurement divided my, my waist divided by two when i inserted it whatever was remaining i divided it into two so i inserted half of it on one side and then the other remaining half i had to put it on the other side okay so you can see what i'm doing here i'm trying to insert half of it so the same i did for the bust and i connected the lines and i went to my sewing machine to sew it so just watch what i'm doing here is 17 and a half 17 and a half then from that point i'm going to check what we have i'm folding my tape measure into two to be able to get the center point and i will mark it here is what i'm doing and then i went ahead to connect the lines with my ruler and i went ahead to sew it so once i was done sewing it whatever was you know the measurement there is i'm going to insert the same thing on the other side of my of my uh, top so here is what it looks like i've sewn the both sides and i'm going ahead to take off the pins that i actually put on the front of this um i used to hold the front down to enable me insert the measurements so here i just have taken out the pins and i've opened it up and this is what our top is looking like hola our top is actually coming back coming together okay it's coming together so here this is um the bias strip that i'm going to be using and i'll use it to just you know hem the 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 oh uh, i'm going to use it to hem the this top the neckline area and also i'm going to use it for the down part so this is what i'm going to what it's going to look like and the bias i actually i'm going to i want it to be tucked in so it means that i'm going to be sewing it on the right side of this fabric and i'll tuck it in over on the wrong side but if you actually want to use it for some persons bias can be used for a design so you can just go ahead and you know make it in such a way so on the wrong side and then it comes to the front so here is me i'm turning over my band this band is really long i think it's almost like 50 inches for each of the lengths and what i used for the width is um the width is four four and a half yeah four and a half inches while it wasn't a fold so on fold it means it's going to be two 0.25 so this is what the band looks like i've gone ahead to sew it and i turned it so i'm measuring that point now and i've laid down the pointed edge of this overlap so that i'm going to cut it through because i need to put this band on it okay so what i did here was i measured that band it was 2.25 i added extra one inch and i cut that side out that front part to enable me put my to enable me insert my band so this is what it's going to be like do you see so i'm going to be inserting my band at that point leaving half of an inch on each of the ends because i'm going to actually use a bias to turn it over so i'll take this to my sewing machine and i'm going to actually just sew it down on that point like i'm showing you guys once i was done doing i will bring it back to show you what it looks like so i have gone ahead to use my my bias strip to just you know hem this and also you see what the the band area looks like and i also hemmed the down part but i didn't use the bias for the down part i didn't want it so thick i just used the fabric and i did a um a rolled hem okay for that part so this is what it looks like and this is coming together we are actually almost done here so the next thing I am going to do now is to bring the sleeve over and I will go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew and I'm going to, you know, create a casing for my elastic 
my round sleeve is 10 inches and i went ahead to just remove two inches and i used eight inches for the elastic the reason is because this elastic i'm using is not really so stretchy so i didn't have to take out so much if you're using a very stretchy elastic and um, maybe you can just take out like three but even if i was using a very stretchy elastic i don't like it so tight because i like to be comfortable when i'm wearing elastics um dresses that have elastics so here is what i'm going to be doing creating a case and i'm folding first the first i'll folding first and i'm going to fold another one and i will continue like that until i get to the end point of the down part of the sleeve so the same thing i'm going to do for the other side and i'll bring it to show you guys what it looks like so here i'm done sewing the two sleeves creating their casing and this is what it looks like so i'm going to go ahead and i will use my pin my safety pin to actually secure this elastic and you know begin to insert it through that casing that i had created i think you have to be very careful here so that you don't give yourself an extra um, work so i kept taking it gently until i got to the point where this elastic you know went inside and then i used my my pins to just secure that point so that you know it doesn't come off from the other end so here you'll see me using my pin to just secure it I actually used two pins because i don't want any stories so i put the first one and i put the second one and then what i would do here is just to go ahead and continue doing this up until the end then i'll also use my pins to hold it down again so i took off this um safety pin and i used my office pin to just hold it down the same thing i did for the other side i take it to the sewing machine and i will hold them together hold this side hold this other side so i'll make sure that i'm holding the elastic frame to the um sleeves the casing that i had created so once i was done i'm just going to you know insert my sleeves and pleat any excess that i have on the center point of my shoulder area so i will go to my sewing machine and i would do that so once i was done doing that i went ahead to just close the sleeve all right and connect it back into the bust area where where i had left a space to insert that sleeve so this is what it looks like and then i'm going to wear it for you guys to see what the final look is like guys this top is so so beautiful like my god it's so beautiful this is what the top looks like i mean the top is giving so like i told you guys if you want a fuller sleeve you already know what to do you you're going to put your you're going to make yours fuller but i just had to make i just had to use um the fabric that i had left okay i didn't have so much fabric and i think i really like the outcome i wouldn't have loved the sleeve to be bigger than this so thank you guys for watching my video i am going to see you guys in my my next one. Bye.